I've made a conscious effort the last five or six months to really pull back on my hobby spending. Now it's not that I used to spend more than I could afford or anything, but getting myself geared up to make Blackjack Legacy my full-time job meant cutting back on some things to make it all possible. Well, now that I've managed to make that dream a reality, I couldn't be more happy, but spending zero on my hobby for the last six months has really taught me a few things and I thought I'd share them with you. It's also very topical at the moment. There's a lot of places aren't manufacturing or shipping right now, so it's harder to get your hobby shopping fix and maybe you could also find these same things apply to you too. Everything I already have is something I really wanted when I bought it. Now, it seems obvious thinking about it, but all those unopened boxes of minis, the starter sets I pick up at conventions, or the latest thing I just had to have, were all things that I really wanted when I purchased them and then did nothing at all with them. It's made me assess what I really do want. Why do I want it? Is it just the need to have some retail therapy? Did I get caught up in the latest hype? Or did I just change my mind between clicking that buy button and it arriving at my home? Now, whatever the reasons were, I have things at home that I've just not really given the time to. That's not only wasted money for me, but it's also boxes of stuff that I need to find storage space for. I'm actively going back now and reassessing, is this a game or a model I really will use? Or should I just sell it on and make some of that money back? And I can use that to fund the things I actually really do want. The lesson here is, did I really want that new stuff? Or did I just really want something new? Finishing project is very satisfying. Again, you may be looking at me and saying, no shit, Sherlock. But having so much stuff already and then keep buying more new stuff has led to a lot of started but unfinished projects. By not adding to that pile of opportunity I have, I'm beginning to make headway through some of those projects. I'm painting up my Hero Quest box set, which has stood unpainted for over 30 years. I'm working my way through my Hellboy Kickstarter pledge. My Blood Red Skies planes are now ready to see the Battle of Britain. And more than anything else, I'm well on my way to my first ever fully painted 2000 points Kings of War army. It's been a game I've always looked at, but I've been put off by the number of models that I'd have to paint. I've bought models in the past, I've looked at all the plastic, and I've just shut the lid on the box. Through this, I've opened those boxes back up, I've committed to getting an army together, and I've even started up a slow grow community to help motivate me and help motivate others in my position to get that project done. It's hugely rewarding seeing them painted army grow, and then the more I paint, the more I actually want to paint. The lesson here, having multiple projects on the go can help keep things fresh, but finishing them is a huge motivation to do more. I have some amazing games I just haven't given the time to. There's always that pull from social media, from your gaming friends, or even just from the latest GW reveals to feel like you have to have the latest thing and that it can mean a lot of really good games get pushed out of the limelight. Even worse, it also means that games you've maybe poured money, time and effort into just don't get to the table anymore because the latest hotness steals away your attention, or even worse, it steals away your opponents. Just because the latest new shiny thing hits the market, it doesn't suddenly make all of your other games worse. It doesn't suddenly make them bad games. By not buying any of these new releases, and I was close many times to be fair with things like Necromunda Dark Uprising, a new wave of Walking Dead, or even Marvel Crisis Protocol releasing, this has meant I've kept focus on the things I'm already enjoying and I've devoted time to exploring what I already have. Playing more Warcry for example, teaching my wife to play Dreadball after it sat on my shelf for just far too long and now we're having regular home games during this lockdown. I've also devoted that time to keeping the Dwarf Army growing and using the stuff I already had until I reached the point that I'd painted everything I owned for those little angry men. I've broken out Batman Gotham City Chronicles and I've finally put the time into understanding how to play the game and I really enjoyed it. I've played Blood Red Skies after it sat ignored and again I enjoyed the game. This tabletop gaming industry produces some amazing games that sadly don't get to see the light of day. And now with me doing this full time, I'm aiming to try and change that in some little way and shine a light on some of those. The lesson here, the latest does not mean it's better. And even if a game is old, it's still new to me if I haven't played it yet. The fear of missing out is like the bogeyman. 
it's not real. Okay, so maybe it feels real at the time. Maybe I felt like everyone around me is buying the new big thing, and if I don't buy it now, I'll never get the chance. There's been some great examples in the time period I'm talking about, such as the Sisters of Battle box set and the Clone Wars Star Wars Legion set. I almost got caught up in the hype both times and almost bought stuff I now know I just didn't need. I don't even play 40k and I already have a fully painted Legion starter box from the Vader Loop release that just doesn't see the table nearly often enough. Having a really motivating reason to not get caught up in the hype and stop myself from spending on these short supply releases has shown me that I actually don't get the regret afterwards for not buying. I don't feel like I've missed out. That's not to say if there was something new that I really did want now and I know it's going to be in short supply that I wouldn't buy it. But now I know what I really do want and what I used to think I didn't want to miss out on and they're two very different things. The lesson here is you do not need to own everything. There isn't enough time in the world to enjoy every single thing that is must have. It's amazing how much you can save by hobbying with what you have. Now, maybe I'm a bit of a special case here. I had a lot of stuff that I'd bought in the past and I didn't need, and then I stopped buying because the desire and will to turn my dream into a reality and make content creation my full-time career was more desirable than giving into the fear of missing out. However, I'm pretty sure most of the hobbyists that I know have similar stockpiles of stuff. It really made me take stock of my spending habits that include you, Starbucks. <laughs> and it also reflected on the things that I had already bought that just were never going to get played. They were never going to get built or not get painted. Just because for whatever reason, I didn't feel the same way about those things now that I did when I bought them. I sold some stuff to clear up space and add to my savings pot. However, I also replaced spending money with spending time on the things I already had. Not only did I achieve what I set out to do with my job, but I also learned to really love gaming and hobbying again and get away from the constant churn of buy something new, talk about it for a bit, and then buy something new again. Now I'm not telling anyone not to buy the things that they want or the things that make them happy, but this has been a great exercise in understanding why I previously bought the things and what aspects of the hobby actually make me happy. And it turns out retail therapy is a dangerous hobby in itself. The lesson here is money doesn't buy you happiness, but it does buy you more plastic toys than you'll ever know what to do with, and that doesn't bring you happiness either. Now, none of what I've said today is rocket science, but sometimes you just need to kind of step back, take a look at the bigger picture, and understand exactly what it is about this hobby that you enjoy, and why it's the hobby that keeps you coming back. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.